TV closing higher by more than 20% today after Needham doubled its price target on the stock from 30 to 60. Laura Martin is the analyst behind that move, joins us now with a lot more. Uh, the, I mean, the stock of late has been insane. Why? Ludicrous mode. Yeah, yeah. beyond. <laughs> Beyond plaid. Um, so we really like this one. It's a play on connected television growth or streaming growth. Uh, it also benefits from strong advertising revenue demand next year if we do come out of the pandemic. And if we don't, it has a subscription revenue stream model. Uh, I do think sports is going to go back to normal next year. And it's a sports first streaming service. So it has ESPN and about 50 other sports channels. So it's a demographic target audience is young men that advertisers need to reach that are paying round numbers a thousand dollars a year for sports content which is a great demo i mean you, you look at it, the chart right there it's up 134 percent in one week right <laughs> and it, it seems like it really got jump started earlier in the week on this report that they could be eyeing exclusive sports content what's the likelihood of that what's the what would the cost be uh, for a company like this well, they're already doing direct deals for like the NFL channel and the MLB channel and the NBA channel. They already do all those direct channel deals with the leagues. Um, and then they have more regional sports networks than any other skinny bundle. These are skinny bundle products. So they're $60 a month with a focus on sports. Um, I think the upside actually is coming from sports betting because they bought a company that does wagering and they're saying they'll have a wagering product, sports betting product in the market within 12 months. I think mm -hmm. that's really exciting given that DraftKings sells at 25 times revenue. Laura, I, I feel like we need to give you extra credit because it's not that you were late on this. You were very early. You started recommending this company before we saw this this huge run up, or at least in the middle of it. You also made that similar kind of call with Trade Desk, which has also been a moonshot chart. What What is your process here for picking some of these momentum winners? And Roku the year before that, recall. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think what's going on is we've got a really strategic shift in the consumer towards streaming, which is driving connected TV ad revenue. And those are benefiting even during the pandemic. But as we come out of the pandemic, the momentum around connected TV viewing and, and ad revenue is going to be really powerful because $60 billion of linear TV advertising has to reach these consumers that are now only on streaming platforms and places like Netflix and Disney Plus don't have any ads. So those advertisers really have to pay a lot to reach consumers that are young and on streaming platforms. So that really helps places like Roku and Trade Desk and Fubo, actually. You do address one of the near term risks in, in the stock, and it's important that our viewers who look at the kind of gains that this has already enjoyed and may enjoy if, if your call is going to be right. And that's a lockup, which happens on January 1st, not that long away. What's the risk really there? So the bear case is that the float could almost double on January 1st because about half of the total shares outstanding become unlocked up. Right now, they're not allowed to be sold. Um, in a deal with the underwriters. So those shares become saleable in the open market. So in theory, if all of them came available on the first day, that would really hurt the share price. The two things that we mentioned in the report is that A, average trading volume has gone to 6 million um, shares a day. So it can absorb a lot of those faster than we would have thought when it first went public in October, early October. And then secondly, a lot of the share ownership that's becoming unlocked up is owned by Viacom, Comcast, AMC, A&E, Discovery. And just based on the Roku trade out, if those companies typically left about a year or two after Roku went public, they're not really in a hurry strategically to get out of these streaming businesses where they have exposure. They don't need the money so because they're so big. So I would expect most of those to hold um, and therefore, we won't see those shares except dribbled out over a couple of years. That's my that's my best guess. Ten seconds, Laura, what's the next move? What, what, what's the next stock that's going to make a 500 plus percent move in three months? My top pick for 2021 is something called Magnite, which is a, like Trade Desk, but 12 months behind Trade Desk. It's a sell side platform. That's my number one pick for 2021. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.